Hello my small fat adapted family and welcome back to the Keto Kitchen's Keto Guide. It's that time of year where we are most susceptible to colds and flus. These illnesses can feel extra, extra awful if you're new to keto. So I'd like to talk to you about what you can do to help aid a cold or a flu without coming out of ketosis. We'll talk about the things to avoid and the replacements that are keto friendly. I just want to say that I personally have had one flu and two colds in the last four years of doing ketosis. I, I don't get ill anymore. So these are aids that I don't use anymore, but they are ones that I've trialed and errored throughout the years to aid past common colds and such. Uh, nowadays, I prep for a cold because I'll go to bed like sniffling or a bit of a scratchy throat or something like that, and I just wake up and it's gone. And this is because my body is so good at wiping out a virus whilst I'm asleep. And if that's not a reason to do keto, I don't know what is. Who wants a cold or a flu? No one. Okay, so people on a standard Western diet will usually turn to one of four things to help them with a cold or a sore throat. Lozenges, cough syrup, sports drinks, or honey. Now the problem with these remedies is that they are usually very high in sugar. If your remedy is one of the ones I've just mentioned, let me see if these numbers can change your mind. One strepsil lozenge has three grams of net carbs. Five ml of cough syrup usually has between two to three grams of net carbs. A standard Gatorade sports drink has 39.2 net carbs for the whole bottle. And a teaspoon of honey is six grams of net carbs. And even then, these sugar-free lozenges aren't as innocent as they seem. Uh, for example, Halls do sugar-free lozenges. Let me read you out what the ingredients of these lozenges are. Our sulfamate potassium, also known as our sulfamate K, aspartame, eucalyptus oil, FDNC blue 1, FDNC red 40, flavours, isomalt, sodium carb, carboxymethyl cellulose, soy lecithin, and water. Now, I don't fully disagree with these ones because one of my colds was actually in the last sort of few months and I gave these a go and they were okay and they did the job pretty well for me but i'm somebody that isn't massively set off by sweeteners with a high glycemic index or controversial sweeteners but other people you might be affected by these sweeteners not to mention the amount of ingredients that you're putting down your throat with these another good example of sugar-free lozenges are the Buckley's sugar-free ones and the ingredients for them are as follows. Menthol, ammonium carbonate, calcium carbonate, camphor, Canada balsam, capsicum, cornstarch, eucalyptol, F DNC red 40, flavours, glycerin, isomalt, magnesium carbonate, maltitol, Mono and diglycerides, petrolatum, pine needle oil, propane glycol, sorbitol, soy, leth soy lecithin, soybean oil, and water. So not only do these ones, these Buckley ones, have the worst sweeteners, one of which being maltitol, they also have horrendous ingredients like cornstarch, and a load of ingredients I can't even pronounce. Why would you want to put something in your mouth that you can't even pronounce? And one more example I'm gonna give you is the Fisherman's sugar-free lozenges. The ingredients are as follows. Menthol, aspartame, magnesium, stearate, peppermint oil, and sorbitol. They're all pretty innocent ingredients apart from if you're affected by aspartame or sorbitol, these sweeteners. But compared to the other ones, they are the least ingredients, what feel like the least chemical safest ingredients. And you're going to have a lower insulin response to these if you want to have a lozenge, a sugar-free lozenge. I mean, my only warning with these is fishermen's are known for having lozenges that will knock your socks off because they're strong. So be warned. Another common cold cure is having soup. Uh, usually tomato or chicken soup. If you're going to buy these in a store, from a can, you're gonna be adding a lot of unneeded carbs. 
For example, 120 ml or half a cup of Campbell's condensed tomato soup has 19 grams of net carbs in it. Or in terms of chicken, half a cup or 120 ml of Campbell's condensed cream of chicken soup has about nine grams of net carbs in it. You can have these soups if they make you feel better, but I would really suggest you either make them at home or if you're not well enough to get a family member or a friend to do so. If you're feeling really sorry for yourself, another great thing you can do is to bake keto cookies or some sort of keto treat. Actually, I'm gonna link down below my recipe for my no flour peanut butter cookies because they are just absolutely fantastic. And if you can stomach it, put two tablespoons of dried ginger in them. It's got a hell of a punch, but it really, really helps me feel better and helps just with general colds. Don't cave come off of keto and eat something sugary because you feel sorry for yourself. I know it's hard and I know all you want is junk food right now, but the problem is the virus will feed off of the sugar. So the less sugar you eat, the quicker you will get better. Other great home remedies for a cold or a flu are as follows. Salt gargling, which is quite literally getting lukewarm water, putting salt in it, stirring it in until it dissolves and then putting that in your mouth and gargling it like you would mouthwash. This helps flush out bad things like bacteria, not to mention you're getting a bit of salt and no sugar. Apple cider vinegar is another great thing to have. I'm not gonna stand here and pretend like it's an easy thing to do. No, it's absolutely horrid. It sucks when you're not ill, it sucks when you are ill. But having a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar a day will help alkanize the body, which helps kill bacteria. Uh, this is honestly the best cough syrup replacement you can have but it's horrid. If you really can't stomach the thought of just having apple cider vinegar on its own, put it in a bit of warm water, maybe add a bit of lemon. That way it's maybe kind of a non-alcoholic keto hot toddy. I just call it whatever you want, whatever helps get rid of that taste. <laughs> Antihistamines are great for runny or blocked noses, as in um, like pills for hay fever, you can get them over the counter. Literally just having one a day will help keep your nose clear. Vapor rub or tiger balm. It's that sort of really minty petroleum jelly stuff. Uh, you either apply it on your chest or on your shoulders, not, not on the face, don't apply it near your nose. You apply it on your chest or your shoulders or even put it on your feet and then put a sock on before you go to bed. And this will help just keep a blocked nose clear. Stay at home. If not for you, for the poor buggers at school or at work, that will potentially catch your virus. Chill out. You feel super, super groggy for a reason. Your body is working its ass off right now to fight off an illness. Listen to your body. If you've got to sit on a couch and watch TV for three days running, then do so if that helps you get better. Talking about chilling out, sleep it off. If your body tells you to sleep, don't fight it, sleep. Sleep as much as you can. This will help your body recover quicker because it's doing its maintenance work while you're asleep. Keeping your electrolytes up is uh, something I've mentioned a hundred times over. I will link the video where I talk about the electrolytes, what they are, why you need to keep them up and how to keep them up. Really, really important. Make sure you go and check that out if you haven't. And kind of combined with that is keeping your liquids up. It doesn't have to be water as long as it's keto friendly, you know, low sugar, just anything that you can stomach. If you've got diarrhea or you're vomiting and you're struggling to keep your liquids up, just try and have sips of at least water where you can. Keeping your liquids up keeps your lungs nice and hydrated, which helps with things like the buildup of mucus and your lungs are not somewhere you want mucus. Talking of mucus, keep things hot. Garlic, hot drinks, chili, ginger, whatever you can handle. Uh, I really recommend, my personal favourite is sugar-free or diet ginger ale or ginger beer. It's got a hell of a punch, but it really helps sort of soothe a sore throat, sore or itchy throat. The reason you should have hot foods or drinks is because they will help keep your mucus levels high. Not the mucus in your lungs, that's not where you want it. The mucus in the back of your throat and up your nose and sort of this area. What that mucus does is it traps the virus, which stops it from spreading. Don't lower your temperature. If you do not have a severe fever or a severe temperature during a cold or a flu, whatever, don't lower it. Your body is heating up because it's trying to kill the infection with heat. And I don't understand people that the moment they get a hint of a fever, immediately try and get rid of it. One of the best things you can do is ride out a fever, providing it's 
mild to moderate. It's helping. What I like to do is literally put PJs on, put warm slippers on, put a dressing gown on, put blankets on, put a duvet on, get a hot water bottle, have a hot cup of tea because I'm trying to sweat it out. I will try and sweat out a fever or an illness whenever I get one. Though if you're gonna do this, you're gonna need to keep your electrolytes and your liquids higher because you're sweating out liquid and electrolytes. Breathing in steam is something that can really help uh, with a nasty blocked nose, sort of relieve the symptoms a little bit. Uh, whether that's having a shower, boiling a kettle and having your nose over it, don't burn yourself. Hot water on a stove in a saucepan, obviously or having a humidifier, any of these will help temporarily relieve a blocked nose. Uh, if you've got any sore muscles that are unbearable, you can use ibuprofen or paracetamol, whichever sort of pain reliever you want to use. But don't use it if you don't need to. Uh, using a hot or cold compress will help with a sinus problem. Now sinuses are here just under the eyes or just above on sort of your forehead above your nose and the sinuses will swell up and get quite painful and you can use a hot or a cold compress to just sort of help with swelling and just sort of relieve pain a little bit. It doesn't matter whether it's hot or cold, it's your preference on which one you use. Propping yourself up at night on an extra pillow, this will help stop your nose from blocking as much, which can then cause sort of waking up feeling shoddy or waking up in the middle of the night because your nose is blocked, just elevate yourself a little bit. Do not, under any circumstances, use antibiotics for a cold or a flu. Antibiotics aid bacterial infections, not viral infections. Don't use them. I'm very protective over this because antibiotics are becoming immune to severe bacterial infections and such like E. coli, meaning more people are starting to die from E. coli and such because people use antibiotics when they don't necessarily need them. So do not use antibiotics. It's important to note because a lot of people don't think about it that the reason you get these side effects, these symptoms with a common cold or a flu or whatever is because your body is trying to fight the infection. It's doing it from the inside out. Don't try and remove all of the side effects because they are helping you. You know, treat the symptoms like muscle ache that literally don't aid fighting an infection. But when it comes to the sniffly nose, the blocked nose, the sinus pain, the mucus, the coughing, all of these kind of things, you are hindering more than you are helping if you try and get rid of all of the symptoms rapidly. If you want to get rid of a cold as soon as possible, as hard as it is and as horrible as it is, just let your body do its thing. Ease the symptoms, don't eradicate them. Uh, it's important for me to know I'm not a registered practitioner, I'm not a dietitian, I am not a doctor, I'm nothing professional. I am just a young man with a love for research and a lot of experience in ketosis. If that deters you, I'm more than happy to point you in the direction of doctors that will tell you the exact same stuff I am telling you. But with that being said, I want to really quickly run through a list of things that are to do with a cold or a flu that you should go and see the doctor about. If you have an ear ache that lasts more than a week or drainage from the ear, if you have pain in your face or forehead along with thick yellow or green mucus for more than a week. If you have a temperature higher than 102 Fahrenheit, which is 39 Celsius, if you're an older child or an adult. Hoarseness, sore throat or a cough that won't go away after two weeks. Wheezing, shortness of breath, vomiting that lasts longer than 72 hours. Symptoms that get worse or won't go away after two weeks. You need to call your emergency services, 999 or 911 or whatever your number is where you live if you have severe trouble breathing or increased shortness of breath, chest pain, confusion, seizure, or fainting. And not that I'm expecting your baby to do keto, but if they are, please go and see a doctor if they have a temperature of 100 Fahrenheit or 37.8 Celsius or higher in an infant, this is three months old or less, and go to the emergency room if your baby is being extra fussy or you're having trouble waking them. That's all for this video. If you are ill right now and you're doing keto, I really hope some of these things help you get better quicker. 
Leave a like if you found it interesting, insightful or helpful. Subscribe if you're inclined and if you hit the notification bell, it will tell you when I upload. Any comments, any questions, any queries, anything at all, leave them down below. Keep calm, keep on. Thanks for watching.